Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, who has heard of Antria? Does anybody know Antria? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Antria and NSX. How about NSX? Okay, so NSX, good to know that everybody knows about NSX. So, uh, a disclaimer, this is our agenda, a quick tech talk here. So what is Antria? First of all, so most of you don't know what is Antria, I'm going to talk about what it is and how it works together with NSX. So Antria is a CNI, Container Network Interface, that was developed by VMware a few years ago, and it is a CNCF project. That means it is a fully open source project that you can use whichever uh, Kubernetes distribution you want, and it provides a CNI is a container network interface. What it does is provide con connectivity for the pods inside a Kubernetes cluster. It is based on the OVS, the Open vSwitch project, and it is a very popular project on GitHub. We have more than 1,300 stars. So a little bit more about this project, the Project Antria. Um, what, what we did with this project is create a new CNI. There are lots of CNIs available out there. But what we wanted to do was create a CNI that was available to run in any Kubernetes distribution that you, want, that you have. For example, we run in... Uh, uh, in the OpenShift, we run in Kubernetes, uh, Tanzu Kubernetes from vSphere. You can run in the public cloud provider services like AKS and EKS. It runs whichever, your, in when, whichever provider you have. We can run in uh, public clouds, private clouds. So the idea is you can have an ubiquitous CNI regardless of where you're running your Kubernetes uh, clusters. And we wanted to create a CNI that was enterprise ready, that you could have many features and would be easily integrated with many other um, enterprise applications. So what we did, why would you want to have Entria inside your Kubernetes clusters? when you already have NSX. So NSX, as you know, is VMware's SDN platform. So where we have networking and we have security for your VMs. And when we are talking about Kubernetes, we can use Antria as your CNI. And what type of benefits can you have when you bring these two together? This is what I'm going to show you, how you do this and the type of benefits you have. So this is how will you do it, this. I'm going to show you how do you install, because the documentation, this is something not, um, this is something new. It hasn't been out there for so long. I'm going to show you how you do this. So this is, um, this helps you if you want to install this. And then you'll, do, you'll see the benefits that you'll get out of this. So what is our vision out of this? So our vision is that your apps, your developers, they are consuming your Kubernetes clusters, creating applications, and your CNI, they are running on top of your Kubernetes clusters, doing the networking. You can have a different, uh, the ingress and load balancing is done by another provider, for example, NSX Advanced Load Balancer, the CNI does not do that. And then you have, for example, in your VMs, uh, the networking for your VMs is not done by the CNI. The CNI, Antria, it only, uh, it only covers the networking for the Kubernetes pods. But once you have NSX already doing the networking and security for your VMs, and then you have Antria doing networking, and we have a construct for networking, which is Antria, and you also have policy inside the CNI, why not bring these two together and have one single view of policy, visibility, which is NSX? So what we did is bring the visibility and bring in the policy that we have in Antria and enable your network and security operators to, inside the NSX console, 
give you both the visibility, troubleshooting tools, and enable you to create policies um, from within the NSX manager. That's what, so that's what I just told you. That's what we brought. And one thing that uh, Entria did is uh, when, you, when you use the normal CNIs, like Calico, for example, many people know Calico. It's been out there for a long time. You have the traditional Kubernetes network policies. So if you see the Kubernetes standard network policies that you can use with the Kubernetes API, this is what you can do for security. You can only do a policy that is inside a single namespace. You cannot order those policies. You can only use deny policies. So it is very limited. One of the things we did with Antria is we enhanced what you can do with policies so it is more similar to what you can do in a firewall. So you can have policies that bound to different namespaces, multiple namespaces. You can have multiple, uh, you can prioritize them so you can have multiple orders. You can have different actions so you can have an allow policy, a deny policy. So you en we enhanced these policies. So we have this API entry or network policies so you can have more different policies that, that are more granular that enable you to have better control of the security policy between the the, for the communications between the different pods you have inside your Kubernetes cluster. And this enables you to have a different type of policy for your cluster. For example, you can have your app developer focus on the, on the policy inside their application. And then you have, for example, your security admin uh, focusing on a different type of policy, for example, between the clusters, and then you can have your VI admin, your network admin, doing a different type of policy. So you can have different views in each one, uh, um, doing the configuration and doing the visibility in different parts of your um, environment. And how do you do this? How can you achieve this, this uh, outcome, having a Kubernetes cluster with Antria CNI installed, and I have NSX on the other side, how can I make them talk together? It's very simple. So integrating them, I'm sorry, integrating them is very simple. The first thing you have to do is create uh, some certificates so your Antria cluster can authenticate to your NSX manager. So these are the steps, the steps you need just to create your certificates. And once you create them, you create a principal identity role in your NSX manager. So you have the certificates that have uh, a role that have permissions in an NSX manager. So these are the steps for you. Then what you have to do, once you have NSX, inside the NSX in the VMware page, you can download the entry of it, the, the, uh, the entry of files, so you can install. And it's just uh, one file that you have to, to edit, which is the bootstrap config. And then in that file, you just put the certificate files you generated, the IP address of your NSX manager, and a cluster name, because you might have multiple clusters. Once you do that, you apply that configuration inside your Kubernetes cluster, and that will that will create those pods. Those pods will communicate to your NSX manager. And from that point on, your cluster will be communicating to NSX. What will happen this then is you will have visibility. NSX will have full visibility of what's going on in your um, Kubernetes cluster. So what will you achieve? Full visibility, a single pane of glass for inventory of your containers, you will see all the pods, all your clusters, both your Kubernetes and your VMs. You already have networking for VMs, and you will see your Kubernetes pods, services, everything. You will have tools, for example, troubleshooting tools like Traceflow. It's very useful inside NSX for VMs. You will have a Traceflow, in, a traceflow inside your Kubernetes cluster. You will have a unified security policy formulation inside NSX. 
and you have, for example, support. You will have support from, for, from VMware. You can create a support bundle, and VMware will help you inside that Kubernetes cluster. This is what you can do. And this is not only PowerPoint. We can show you. I have a demo here to show you exactly how this works when you do this integration. So I followed those steps, and I created a little demo so you can see this in action. So this is integrated. I can see I have an entry cluster. I have multiple uh, clusters there. I can see all the namespaces that I created in my cluster. These are, I have two clusters here created. And I can create a security group. When I create a security group and I have Antria now integrated, when I create my members, I now see that I have Antria and I can create a member that is not only a VM, but it is a pod. So I can see that I can create a, a group which has a membership of a pod. And I'm, I'm creating a group with a member called Yelp UI, which is the user interface of an application that is running inside my Kubernetes cluster. So now I can create a firewall rule. The, the, the distributed firewall, I already have a rule here, which is I'm dropping a specific traffic. I haven't published it yet. And this is my application. My application is working. It has a user interface, and it has an app server. It's working. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put that Yelp UI, the user interface. I'm going to apply this rule, dropping the traffic from the Yelp user interface, which is that, the group that I just created, Yelp UI. It's not going to be able to. It's going to drop from Yelp UI to the Yelp app server. What's going to happen here is my application is not going to work anymore because I just made a configuration to my distributed firewall that's applying inside the Kubernetes clusters, um, preventing the traffic from both the pods to work. What I can do now is use NSX troubleshooting tools, and I have a trace flow. And I now have a button called Entry a Trace Flow. It's the same trace flow I have in NSX. So what I can do here is just do the trace flow from one pod to another. So I'm going to do a trace flow from the Kubernetes UI pod to the app server pod. And I can see what's going to happen. It drops. It dropped because of the a rule. And when I check that rule, I know that it, the rule is, if I search for that rule, I can see all the details from that rule. And that rule is that 1006. So I have all these different um, tools that I have. Please take the survey. Thank you for your time.